Greetings everybody, it is the Doctor. Welcome back to Star Trek Online. We have a brand new featured episode ready to go here in Star Trek Online. Was not expecting this, did not know this was coming, but here we go. This was released on Thursday and I am recording this as of Saturday. So of all things, I had no idea until actually today that this new featured episode was available. This does continue the Iconian storyline. I know absolutely nothing about this featured episode. So this is as blind of a run through as you can get. I have not read any news on the Star Trek Online website. I got this actually in, a, in an email, one of those uh, newsletter emails that Star Trek Online sends out. I was checking my Gmail and there you go, it said, new featured episode so I'm like wow okay I gotta go play this so this is it I have no idea what to expect I am on the war doctor he is my tactical character and uh, pretty pretty well geared up on ship and uh, ground so he's prepared for anything that they can throw at us so let's do this let's go to um, over no yeah we go to available no episodes featured episodes there we go and by the way stay tuned toward the end of this video I'll give my summary or review of this mission at the very end of it and I may play it on the other factions as well if it is uh, interesting enough okay time in a bottle already I like the uh, title of that Voyager, under the command of Admiral Tuvok, has been chasing leads regarding a Delta Quadrant race known as the Krenum. So far, he has only been able to turn up rumors and a bunch of anomalous sensor readings. But now we found a Ferengi selling what he claims are Krenum artifacts. You are authorized to negotiate with the Ferengi and obtain these artifacts and follow the trail it provides to where it leads. Captain Kagrin is our contact. You need to be Lieutenant Commander 10 right now until they put it at the end. We have a lead on the Krenim. Voyager went to Krenim space looking for them a few months ago, but didn't find much more than a Vaudwa and some anomalous sensor readings. But now we found a Ferengi selling what he claims are Krenim artifacts. You are authorized to negotiate with the Ferengi and obtain these artifacts. Follow the trail where it leads. We need a weapon against the Icodians, and the Vardwa have gone to a great deal of trouble to keep whatever secrets the Krenim have out of our hands. Uh, so we actually need to go to Drazana Station, it looks like here, to talk to this Ferengi, obtain a Krenim artifact. We get our weekly reward, which is a tech upgrade or specialization point. A duty officer called Samog. An emote, a Ferengi dance. Well, that's interesting. A chroniton split beam rifle. Ooh, now that sounds cool. That would be really good on my time traveling character. Personal shield. And it looks like more rewards to come in the later weeks. A universal kit module called a chroniton jolt. And then a temporal flux generator. We will look at all of uh, the specs and everything on these at the end of the mission here. Before I start it, I'll go ahead and accept it. But before um, we actually start it, an aside here, the Krenum. Now, they were in Voyager. They were they played a big part in Voyager during an, a, a, a kind of a mini-series arc thing called the Year of Hell. This was a really, really good... Uh, I forgot how many episodes it was. Two or three episodes of Voyager. Very, very, very much worth watching. Uh, if you've never seen it, go watch it. Um, it involves the Krenum. Now, the Krenum in that, they were only made powerful by the fact that they didn't time travel. They weren't time travelers, but they were able to affect the past and thus change the timeline. And they did that through destroying worlds, basically. If you destroy an entire world civilization, that will ultimately change, you know, everything in that quadrant or that sector of space or whatever. Um, it'll just change everything. So they were able to affect the timeline in that way. And they use chroniton-based weapons. Now we know the Iconians are very susceptible to chroniton energy. They their brains can't handle it or whatever. 
Now at the end of Voyager, all of that was resolved and the Krenum were made back into a, not a primitive race, but they were made back into a, uh, you know, a race that wasn't a threat. Really, it was just all this, this one guy's, um, this one guy who, who did all this. He was this crazy guy who wanted to get his wife back and that's all he was trying to do. So it wasn't the entire Krenum civilization that was like evil or anything. It was just this one mad scientist guy who wanted to get his wife back and was killing worlds to do it. But it was resolved in the end um, and there was this ominous pad that you saw at the very end that showed his his um, calculations where he was able to see or calculate uh, different timelines. Um, but of course it was all resolved. Nothing came of that. His wife was alive at the end. It was all, it was all very, very good. So now it's, you know, 50 whatever years later after that, I didn't think the Krenum would, would be, you know, a civilization that could be a threat against the Iconians from where that episode left off. But maybe we're going to learn how or why that is possible now. At least I hope so. Anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Krenum. Also, in House Peg, there is a console I missed. Thank you all for letting me know. At the very end of House Peg, at that very last level where you're fighting um, the Harbinger, there is another console if you go around to the other side, and it says that the Iconians sent the Vodwar, one of the first places they sent the Vodwar when they teamed up with them, was to go destroy the Krenum. So apparently the Iconians did see the Krenum as a threat. I don't know if the Vodwar were you know, uh, successful in that or not, but I guess we'll find out in this mission what all that's about. I just wanted to talk about that because the Krenum, they didn't seem like they would be a race that we would need to be concerned with, especially, or have the technology now post, you know, all that stuff that went on because it was all kind of resolved at the end there. Oh, I've got no transwarp. We will just go there the old-fashioned way. Rosanna. So I'm interested. I'm real interested to see where this goes. Um, but it has been building up to the Crinum for quite a while now. There's been hints before even House Peg that the Crinum were somehow going to get involved, and uh, we knew Voyager was off in some secret mission in the Delta Quadrant, and. Um, that was apparently it, was to find the Krenum. So uh, I find that interesting. Uh, we're almost there now, getting closer. I have heard rumors that Nog was coming back. Uh, he is, of course, was a, a big part of DS9, a uh, Ferengi who was the first Ferengi to join Starfleet. So pretty big there, pretty big, a pretty big event there. I don't know if he's in this mission or not, but we will find out. Yeah, I had no idea that this was coming this week or that I, uh, this was expected. So, uh, the total shock to me, and don't know what this will be about, but I am definitely looking forward to it. Okay, here we go. Let's go to Jarzana. Take the turbo lift to Quinn's office. Oh, really? There's a turbo lift? Oh, we're taking all our bridge officers with us. That is going to mean battle.
Sir, business facilitator Gwen has rented a space at the station for his private sales meetings. We aren't sure what the objective he is selling is yet, but the rumors are that it's a technological device of some sort. The price Quinn is asking for is significant. You could buy a moon for that much latinum. Starfleet Command reports that additional assistance is on route, but that we should go ahead and make an attempt to obtain the uh, device. Check in with the receptionist. Hi there, receptionist. Hi. May I help you? Oh, wait, you must be. I'm sorry, but the business facilitator is busy at the moment and cannot be disturbed. Wow, the voice. Love the voice actor they uh, got here for Rena. Sounds like... I'm gonna say it sounds like Lita. We had an appointment. Yes, but Quen left me explicit instructions about this. He's in the middle of a delicate negotiation to triple his profits on the sale of a rare Delta Quadrant artifact and cannot be disturbed. Okay, we can negotiate. Doesn't Quinn want to hear an offer from the combined financial resources of Starfleet, the Cleon Empire, and the Roman Empire, or Republic? Or we can lie and say the artifact he's already agreed to sell to us. I'm not the lying type on this character, so let's negotiate. Maybe. Let's see. It was something. Krenim, I think? Oh, Delta Quadrant treasures are all the rage right now. Artifacts from cultures the Vadwar wiped out are particularly valuable. Quen's made quite a bit of latinum bringing them back through the gateways. Now, that profit-sharing plan he promised me hasn't materialized, but is it my place to complain? Really does sound like Lita, the actress who voices Lita. Um, plead or threaten. I know you're just doing your job, but it's very important we get that artifact, or if you don't let us pass, we're going to tear down the door. If I were a Klingon, I would say that, but let's plead on this one. Maybe when I do it on a Klingon side, we will threaten. I'm sorry, but my instructions were very clear. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, but I need this job. I'm trying to save up enough for a ticket off this station. Oh, now I've got to go arrange for transport. You can? What am I saying? You have a starship, of course you can. Go on ahead. Quen and the other buyer are in the cargo bay, but you better hurry. They were trying to get the deal finalized before you could stop them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I guess... Well, she's running. She's anxious to get out of here. So an artifact from the Crinum. Interesting because I, I just wonder wonder where this is gonna go. Let's see. Not so fast. The gentleman with the rather imposing associates over there has just made a very competitive offer for the device. Care to make a counter bid? I'll make it worth your time to deal. Excuse it's. It's just, you know, to me, I don't know, but it seems kind of weird. The, the fate of the, potential fate of the entire universe relies on us negotiating with a Ferengi for a device. Can't we just, like, take the device and say, um, we're going to go save the universe now. See you later. You said there weren't any other buyers, Quinn. Now what do I see? Starfleet Stooges here to cause trouble. Guards! Get these riffraff out of here so I can conclude my deal in peace! Well, I'm not leaving without that device. Am I gonna have to fight someone? Yes. Enemy target on center. No problem. I will take him out quickly. How about that? Now you want to give me the device? Fine! I'll add what I was going to pay those guards to my off. Hold it! I am Nog, son of Grand Nagus Rong. 
and I am a Ferengi. And when you deal with these people, you deal with me. Ah. Uh, you have a choice. Either deal with me, or I ask my father to have a word with the liquidators about your poor business practices. Um, well, I'm sure we could come to an understanding. That's what I thought. Now, kiss the staff. <laughs> Get out! Not you, Quinn. All right, Nog. Wow. Here's my best offer. How about we agree on a price, and you get your Delta Quadrant doodad, and I leave. Everyone's happy. No? Fine. How about I answer your questions, and maybe then I get to leave. But let's get on with it. Every minute I stand here, I'm losing a strip of latinum. Time is a very valuable commodity. What do you know about the relic? The device is Krenum in origin. Specifically, it's from the Krenum Imperium. Constructed sometime in the mid-22nd century, if I had to take a guess. Strange piece of technology. I haven't seen anything else like it. Highly advanced. And it has hallmarks of Krenum work. But it's, uh, odd. Definitely odd. I remember now something about the episode when he says the mid 22nd century. That's because the people who are the mad scientist guy, I forget his name, when he uh, created the ship and all that, it was something like 200 years ago or something. It was in the past, but yet at the same time, or he was from the past, and they had been working at it. They had been trying to do this thing they've been doing for like 200 years. So by the time we meet up with him in Voyager's time, they've been working at it for like 200 years. So he would have started off in the past doing this. And I guess the ship was able to make itself be outside of the space-time continuum, meaning it was not affected by changes in the timeline. And maybe somehow that was able to keep them alive for 200 years. The Vodlar, that's what! At one point, the Krenum Imperium held more than 200 star systems in the Delta Quadrant. They lost some of that territory in a couple wars, but overall they were doing well. Not the biggest business in the Quadrant, but not the smallest either. When the Vardwar started their war, Gaul took a special interest in the Krenum, bombed them back to the Stone Age, and then some. As far as anyone knows, the Krenum are basically extinct these days. Where did you get the device? I picked it up from a Talaxian who wanted to trade for supplies. He told me he got it from the uh, Kayana system. That was it. There used to be a Krenum colony there, but it's gone now, just like the rest of their empire. Gone? The Vaudoir destroyed them? The Talaxian wasn't very clear on that. He just said, gone. If I'd asked any more questions, he might have increased his price. As a show of good faith to the son of the Nagus, I'm willing to tell you for free. But don't let this get around. It would ruin my reputation as a businessman. The device emits some unusual energy readings. The shielding may have malfunctioned, or maybe it's not fully operational anymore. I'm not sure. But that's why I'm selling it as an antique. As is, and no refunds. Hmm. Do I look like a member of the Vulcan Science Academy to you? I don't know. It's yours now. You paid for it. You figure it out. I hope it doesn't blow up your ship. <laughs> now, may I go so we can put all this unpleasantness behind us? I want to drown my sorrows in a comet cocktail and think about all the profit I didn't earn today. Hmm. Okay, well... Don't let the staff of office and these good looks fool you. <laughs> I'm here as a Starfleet officer, and I don't normally flaunt my family connections. But in this case, it seemed like the best way to solve the problem. So I borrowed my dad's second best staff. Well, I gotta say this. Uh, the actor has come back for this job, and it really sounds like Nog. He's got it down. All right, thanks for the assist. It didn't look like Oglo was going to let us purchase this Krenum artifact while he was still in the room. Interesting. 
I know Voyager encountered the Krenim during the journey, and Tuvok was looking for survivors of the Vaudoir purges. For now, though, perhaps we should concentrate on learning what we can from this device. Yes. Sounds Quinn great. left without taking down his security, but fortunately I know how to get around it. This isn't a very sophisticated system. It's hardly worth the latinum he paid for it. <laughs> if we overload the EPS conduits, we'll create a cascade failure in the system that the control protocols won't be able to handle. That should drop the force field. Let's read a little bit about Captain Nog here before we move on. You're the son of the Grand Nagus? It's true. My father is Grand Nagus Rom. I don't normally have much to do with his business dealings. But in this instance, a little show seemed to be the best way to solve our problem. So Rom ended up becoming the Grand Nagus. That's right, Rom on Deep Space Nine. The Grand Nagus. And Nog, of course, is his son. So he is the son of, Grand Na of the Grand Nagus and also the first Ferengi in Starfleet. <laughs> I grew up on Deep Space Nine with my father and my uncle Quark. That was back before my dad became the Nagus. He was just a maintenance tech. Like my father, I preferred engineering to business. Captain Sisko helped me get into the academy, the first Ferengi ever to join Starfleet. Then my Grand Mogi started seeing Grand Nagus Zek, and there were a lot of changes on Ferenginar. When Zek decided to retire, he thought my dad would be the right person to see them through. Interesting. I know Voyager encountered the Krenim during the journey, and Tuvok was looking- Quinn left without taking down his- I don't mind telling you a bit about myself at all. I grew up on Deep Space Nine with my father and my uncle Quark. That was back before my dad became the Nagus. He was just a maintenance tech. Like my father, I preferred engineering to business. And Captain Sisko helped me get into the Academy, the first Ferengi ever to join Starfleet. I fought in the Dominion War, which is an experience I never want to repeat, and I spent some time on exploration ships. Then it was back to DS9 for a while, off to Utopia Planitia to work with the SCE, and finally taking command of the Chimera. Now I get to see the technology I helped develop at work in the field. Nice. Interesting. I know Quinn right. left without- Here we I think go. you can overload the EPS conduits in the corner there. In the corner, huh? What? Oh, I see. Corner of the room. <laughs> Now that the power flow is disrupted, we can override the administrative access requirement. The controls are, yes, over here by the artifact. Excellent. Now we can get a good look at this. This is uh, going to be pretty crazy. Oh, look, it's got the same uh, stuff that we saw on the pad at the end of the Krenum episode. The different timelines and how he's able to calculate um, how changing things would affect the timeline. That's what he was doing at the end there. Ooh, that's so cool. Oh, one of these, huh? <laughs> the waveforms aren't like anything I've seen before. No, not at all. <laughs> I think I'm getting something. This is definitely Krenum in origin. And Quinn was right on the age. I'm also seeing some repeating elements in the base code uh, almost like a signature. And that strange energy Quinn was talking about is actually chronotons. A lot of chronotons. And chronotons mean temporal manipulation. This little box just got a lot more interesting. Yeah, I kind of figured that. Oh, jeez. I was like... What? What did he say? Did he say, oh, jeez? I was like... Huh? Did I hear that right? I'm gonna have to rewind the video. <laughs> that was a weird. Okay, I hate temporal mechanics, or indeed, or the last thing we need is a visit from temporal investigations. I hate temporal mechanics. I'll take the device back to my ship, the Chimera, and have a look while we're on the way to the Kiana system. From what I understand, Voyager sent an away team to the Kiana system a few weeks ago. But they encountered some resistance and were forced to pull back before they can find what they were looking for. But now that we have this, maybe we'll be able to find what remains of the Krenum, if there's anything left to find. Okay. I'll see you in the Delta Quadrant. Fine. Wonderful. I've explored many places as a Starfleet officer, but this is my first time seeing the Delta Quadrant. 
According to Quinn, the Krenum artifact came from this system. I hope we haven't come all this way just to chase ghosts. Me I've had too. a chance to look at the Krenum device, although I'm not sure how to activate it yet. It's definitely designed for temporal manipulation, although I don't think it would enable someone to travel through time. It's almost like a step sideways, if that makes any sense at all. I'll keep working on it and let you know if I learn anything more. My question is how did this device even get developed? Because when that episode ended, it sounded like, you know, he was going to maybe not really continue his research because now he had his wife back so he has no need to unless somebody else picked up the research and created it I don't know Voyager's preliminary scans of the system turned up a number of anomalies but nothing conclusive according to Krenum records though there's supposed to be an M-class planet in this system we're not reading anything like that on the sensors could be let's check that wreckage out first it might give us a better idea of what happened out here. And we should be on the lookout for Vaudoir. Preliminary scans indicate they've been actively patrolling through this system. Keep an eye out for Vaudoir. They're still patrolling this area. So that means battle. <laughs> well, okay. A step sideways. If I had to place a bet, I'd say that wreckage is where this artifact was found. Heads up! Vaudoir on an intercept course! Of course. Well, that was too easy. The wreckage appears to be Krenum. The weapon signatures are definitely Vaudoir. According to Voyager, the Krenum were a fairly small society. There had to be a reason the Vaudoir went out of their way to target them. Let's move. There might be more ships in range. And I happen to know that reason. All you have to do is watch that episode, Voyager Year of L, and you will know. That's there all, are more Vaudoir on an intercept course, but we may be able to avoid them. I suggest we use the mineral content of the asteroids I've marked to conceal our energy signatures. Vaudoir sensors aren't as good as ours. Most of their technological advantage appears to be directed toward making better weapons. So it should work, as long as we don't attract their attention before we get out of their path. Okay, use asteroids as cover. Oh, we got a time limit. Hide in asteroid cluster. That's more than Vaudoir. They must be looking for that Vaudoir patrol. Lila. I don't think those heralds detected us. Let's hope they don't come back this way. Well, I'm okay for a herald fight. I don't know about you guys, but I'll do. I'll die. I don't mind one. And I guess I'm getting one. The must have gotten a signal out. So much for our investigation. Now, now. Warning. Target shield has failed. That's what I think of him. <laughs> Nog, nothing to worry about at all. There was something about the Krenum that was such a threat to the Vaudoir and the Iconians that they're still patrolling the old Krenum systems. If we can find more Krenum technology, or maybe unlock what we have, we might be able to find out what is so important. That could be something the Alliance can use against the Iconians. I recommend that the Chimera and your ship patrol the outer system while we take an away team to the surface. I'll bring the device and keep trying to learn more about it. So we got two possibilities here. A, the Krenum Chroniton weapons will help us. Or B, the Krenum technology that allows them to change history via destroying civilizations in the past could help us. If that were the case, 
if they're thinking about wiping out the Iconians 200,000 years ago before they have a chance to do all this, that would drastically change the entire universe. Man, that would be a very bold thing, but I don't know if that would be the right thing. Um, okay, agreed, my team will meet you there. This doesn't make sense. There's nothing here that would cause the readings I was seeing from orbit, but there are traces of chronotron particles. Chronotron. I've never known chronotrons to appear naturally without some sort of temporal manipulation going on, but there's nothing here. I'm starting to come up with a theory, but I need some more data. I recommend we take some additional scans. Chronotron. Agreed, there's nothing, something here, we just need exactly. to find it. Exactly, but we need to be quick. Those patrols we encountered in orbit will be missed soon. I'm going to order the Chimera to try to avoid contact, but warn us if more ships arrive. Okay, let's scan some pretty looking These tall crystals. spires are charged with temporal energy. Indeed. Curious. It's almost like it's in a state of temporal flux. That is interesting, actually. I need to get some scans. There's something going on. Uh, there's something going on. There you don't say. There are more mineral deposits over there. There's a resonant frequency here that's not natural. You think? I'm reading another anomaly ahead. They're making weird noises that I don't like. What in the world? That is a heck of a game right there. Yeah, I did it. These anomalies have a shape, like a warp field, but not quite the same. Okay, I got no idea. I'm I'm just as clueless as you, Nog. Mysterious. Completely mysterious. The only other place I've seen sensor readings like this was in the wormhole. Okay. Heralds have landed and are approaching Ograt. There! Behind those rocks! What? Where? What? Oh, prep for and survive incoming Hurry. attack. They'll be here any moment. Go to a more defensible location. Interesting. Can we go this into this This area looks cave? defensible. Get ready. I have an idea. We need to use the device. I've been trying to activate it, and I've almost got it. Keep them busy. If I can get it working, I should be able to conceal us. Protect Nog while he works on the device. Work quickly, <laughs> Nog. I have no idea what's going on right now. But it sounds interesting. Here they come!
Watch out! There's more of them! They're coming from both sides. It's not good. I need more time to align these frequencies! Almost there. Just one more connection and that should... Whoa, okay. Nog's gone. Okay, so, Nog vanished. That's great. <laughs> Okie dokie. This is a good battle. I do wonder where Nog went though. There, we can use these rocks for cover while we plan our next move. Ho hold off heralds. Right. Flanking damage detected. Personal shield losing power. Okay, now what? Holy moly, what just happened? If you'll forgive the pun, I managed to buy us some time. Ah, where are we, Nog? <laughs> and what is this place? What the heck is going on? Um, the heralds are ghosts now. Who the heck are you, Crinum leader? Crinum? Huh? All right, let's talk to Nog. It's taken me some time to convince the Crinum to help us, but they finally agreed. Remember how I said the device could remove someone from the time stream? It did. That's where we are now, in the temporal bubbles. And how we perceive time in here is a little different than outside. That's why the Heralds can't see us. We're out of their timelines. Out of all timelines, in fact. While we're here, it's almost like we don't exist. Ah, so this is the specific technology that allowed the ship itself to exist outside of the timeline, thus not affected by changes in the timeline. Ah, so are you saying the Crinum are hiding in this null space, we'll call it? Null time? No one's shooting at us. I think that's a good thing. The Crenum are... they're a little touchy. Uh, 
almost being driven to extinction by the Vaudoir has made them suspicious. But they're willing to talk to us if we help them stabilize the temporal energy. I suggest we help. I wouldn't want to be in here if the fields collapse. Okay, well, let's talk to the Krenum. Wow. So this is like a null time. I like it. I've had some time to observe you and Captain Nog, and your actions make it clear that you are no friend of the Vaudoir or the Heralds. This does not, however, assure me that you will be allies to my people. The Krenum have lost much. Our empire is gone, and our people have been killed or scattered. We are what remains, and I will do whatever I must to protect this system, even if it means leaving you to face the Heralds alone. You have already repaired some of our emitters that were damaged by the attack, but there is more yet to do. Should our temporal equipment fail, this location will be instantly overrun by Heralds. If that happens, none of us will survive. Um... More of our emitters must be realigned, and there are other pieces of equipment my people are already working to repair. Assist my team, and then we will talk again. Okay, so I need to help repair things now. Prove my loyalty, I guess. <laughs> Look at the heralds walking around like... Where'd they go? Okay, that is kind of freaky. Okay, guys. Your fight overloaded some of the power couplings we used to moderate the temporal flow. If we had a contained space like the technology was originally designed for, this wouldn't be a problem. But we keep pushing the boundaries of what these flow modulators will do. I'm rerouting the power to take stress off the damaged couplings. But first, we need to get this capacitor aligned and ready for the transfer. Who invented this technology? The temporal technology was developed by a scientist ah, named Anorax. Anorax, that was He's still name. a mystery, even to us. We know he was a ship commander in the Imperium fleet and a genius in temporal mechanics, and that he started work on his inventions in the late 22nd century after our war with the Rilnar. Perhaps he saw temporal manipulation as a way to change our fortunes. We know he was working towards weaponizing his designs, and I can tell from what little I've seen that it is possible. But full access to his data is restricted. So I don't know the full capabilities of his work. So Anorax was the crazy, quote, scientist guy I was talking about before. All he wanted was his wife back. Noble goals, but he went about it the wrong way. And he did end up weaponizing his inventions, but then it was all reset when Voyager came into play. Your fight overloaded some of the power couple. Okay, let's align the capacitor then. Sounds like a thing to do. Okay, now it's starting to look like something. Yay, I did that. I did a thing. Be happy. People, I helped you. You can clap and sing songs about me now. Okay, next. Krindam incident. I do want to uh, learn more about them here. So it looks like we're going to get some backstory on them. That's very, very good. Who can I help now? Be weird having these heralds walk around like this everywhere. Okay, talk to uh, Engineer Spila. The temporal compensators are out of alignment. They help keep us at a stable point in the timeline. If they fail completely, we could end up lost in time. Grab a hyperspanner. We need to get this fixed before the drift coefficient moves out of the safe zone. Can I ask you something? For an Imperium, the Krenum don't seem to have a lot of resources. The Imperium was at its peak in the mid-22nd century. At that time, it controlled more than 900 planets, and our territory spread across more than 5,000 parsecs. Then came the Rilnar, and the Zal, and the Garanor, the Mawasi, and the Nahydron. Our wars chipped away at us, carving one planet after another away from the Imperium. There were only 27 planets left when the Bodwar came. Now, almost everyone on those worlds 
is gone too. Mm, okay. The temporal compens. Let us fix a temporal emitter. Uh, uh, because matrix is stabilized, begin repairs. What? Uh, what? Disconnect the buffer, reconnect the buffer, realign the matrix. What do you think, Nog? <laughs> you should realign the matrix crystals. Okay, let's do that. Uh. You need to disconnect the buffer before you do anything else. All right, let's do that. <laughs> now you need to reconnect. You got it. Good. I'll put the next location on your tricorder. <laughs> oh, it's a good thing he was there to help me because I... I'm just a, a lowly tactical officer. What do I know about realigning buffers? Matrix crystals. I know nothing. Okay, that's kind of freaky. That's kind of weird. Lot of heralds around here for sure. So the Krinum are not only hiding themselves, but they're highlight hiding their entire structures, everything. Very cool way to do that. Just take everything out of the timeline. Hold this. No, hold it right next to the bracket. Or the spanner won't there. Got it. Thanks. Something is putting too much stress on these components. I'm not sure what it is, but we don't have enough spare parts to keep rebuilding this transceiver. Grab a tricorder and run a level 3 diagnostic. Maybe there are some microfractures. If we can find and repair those, this should hold out until I can fabricate a new unit. Can I ask you about this technology? Why are you having so many problems with it? <laughs> what a heck of a question. Anorax's original designs are for a temporal field that's big enough for a ship. Sizable, but finite. We've adapted the tech to cover much larger areas, but that makes the field more unstable. And we had to get everything operational before the Vaudoir found us. So we cut some corners. A lot of corners. We're making updates and repairs as fast as we can, but we can't afford a failure. This tech is the only thing keeping us alive. So I've got a theory now as well. The Iconians could not use this technology or even try to attempt to use it because the chroniton field would basically make them go insane, probably. So this is why, I guess, even if they had found this device from the Crenum, they wouldn't really be able to use it. Maybe the Heralds would, but the Iconians would not be able to. Hold this. No. Uh, what do you think, dog? You need to scan for microfractures. We Let's do that then. Scan microfractures. Next. You'll need to formulate an epoxy. You got it. Epoxy go. Repair go. That should do it. Yay, I helped. Okay, I did things. I helped. You should be happy now. You've shown you're willing to help. Now perhaps we can come to a mutually beneficial arrangement. We have Anorax's plans, but not the... Interesting. The Heralds are opening a gateway. Uh, what? The repairs should be enough. Yes. Those struggles are many. 
There's the guy with no arm. what any of that meant okay but I have heard this before the whole they must be as one this is a continuing theme we've learned about with the Iconians but I got no idea what it means also the other saved them when Iconia was originally attacked 200,000 years ago who is the heck who in the heck is the other and apparently the attack divided them made them weak what is going on I want answers so bad right now <sighs> Nog, give me some answers. They couldn't see us? There were Iconians right in front of us and nothing. They had no idea we were here. We were completely safe. You're right. This could be what we need. Exactly. They can't they can't time travel. They can't see through time. They chronotons mess up their minds. This is it. This is the technology we need. The only protection left to my people is our ability to manipulate time. But it is something we must do with great care. Even the most innocuous of changes can ripple through reality in unexpected ways. Hmm. Well, interesting options here because if I go by what the Federation really knows about the Krenum, it would be we didn't know the Krenum could do anything like this. Let's do that. My people and I have made Anorax's theories of temporal manipulation our lives work. In at least one temporal variant, his ship made the Krenum Imperium the undisputed masters of this region of space. If only we could recreate that vessel. What vessel? Yeah, see, we wouldn't know about that vessel because time was... Uh, basically reset. So, yeah, what vessel? Anorax designed a ship, a wondrous vessel, that could manipulate the time streams and erase elements in an attempt to bring about a desired result. Our records show that he even attempted to use this vessel to restore the Krenim's fortunes, but he was defeated by an unknown alliance. Uh, Voyager. Afterward, the Krenim Imperium declined. As perhaps was its fate all along. We were diminished, but content to let time progress as it would. Until the Vardwar. That unknown alliance was Voyager. Wow, it's coming for a full circle. The first Krenum worlds to fall managed to warn the others. When the Vardwar came, we hid ourselves in the time stream. It was the only way we survived. Before the Vodwar arrived, we were working on a relic. It was a replica of Anorax's time ship. With it, we could have gone back and eliminated the Vodwar threat before it even began. The Vodwar's assault on the Imperium took too much from us. Now we possess Anorax's work, but not the means to bring it to life. You have seen what our technology can do. We have the designs. You have the manpower and the materials. 
Perhaps your governments would be interested in mutual cooperation. Allow us a chance to undo what the Vaudoir did, and we will give you something that will erase your enemies from time itself. Oh my gosh. It really is coming full circle to make to remake that ship and do this all over again. Is that the right thing to do? Ooh. Wow. There's more here than what you've seen. Oh, they you hit, hit in the entire, entire planet. planet. Yes, we removed ourselves from the time stream to stay alive. With your help, we can change everything. What? You hit an entire planet, but you can't build this time ship on your own? We have the plans. Our resources are almost gone. We have shipyards, workers, and all the materials you can need. Precisely. We revealed ourselves to you as a gesture of good faith. What will you do in return? Oh. My. Gosh. The Iconians and the Heralds are gone. It's safe to resync with our time and contact our ship. But this is huge. A whole Krenum colony that survived the Vaudoir? One that has temporal technology that even the Iconians can't counter? A weaponized time ship that can erase entire civilizations like they never existed? This could change the entire war. We we could have a chance now. Or this could be used against us or an enemy. This is terrible technology. You could erase an entire civilization from existence that would have never existed, period. Period. They would never even, no one would even miss them because they would have never existed in the first place. Irre irrevocably changing the entire universe. What? I don't know if we should have that kind of power. Oh, I guess I'm ready. The Iconian. Sir, is that it? What happened? We've been scanning for you, but you just disappeared. We've been hiding in the debris to stay away from the Herald ships, and then, you're not going to believe this, there is a planet here now. An entire planet. Did you find something down there? Something that can conceal an entire planet? Um, yeah, you might say so. It's possible. Very possible. And that's it. It's over. Just like that. Whew. Temporal mechanics is not a complication we need, but this weapon they are proposing sounds intriguing. You and Captain Nog were correct in thinking the Alliance would be interested in investigating such a thing. Personally, I approve of anything the Iconians might fear. Kapla! Okay, let's look at what we get as our reward, and then we'll talk about the episode. All right, we get a weekly reward. This contains either, either a universal tech upgrade or a specialization point. I'm going to take the specialization point. We're going to get a duty officer, so Mog, a Ferengi dance, some dilithium, a chroniton split beam rifle. This is anti-proton damage. Interesting, it's anti-proton. I guess anti-protons are the same as chroniton. 5% chance for chroniton radiation. It's going to slow people down. It's got a better critical chance, critical severity. It's a cone AOE anti-proton damage. I'm definitely going to take that weapon. The other thing is just a regular personal shield. Blah. Blah. Bah. To that. But, uh, Chroniton Jolt. This is a universal kit module, so it can work on any kit, any, uh, any module slot. Power recharge and speed buff to allies, allies and accelerators, uh, plus 10% run speed. 10% power recharge time reduction. Well, I look to see what that does. It's a recharge and speed buff to allies and a debuff to foes. So some kind of speed thing. All right, interesting. And then a flux generator is a uh, time shift for five seconds. While time shifted, you gain immunity to all damage. Cannot use other abilities, though. Reusing Temporal Flux while active conceals the time shift. So this is basically what we just saw on that planet, kind of moving our ship, I guess, out of the time stream, and it makes us immutable, uh, Im 
may immu immunity for five seconds. Very cool. I'm going to take the chronoton split thingy. There we go. Let's look at it. Let's go somewhere where I can actually look at it. I just want to see what it looks like equipped. Let's just uh, put it on real quick. Not part of a set. So, no, no set. That's what it looks like. Okay, very shiny. Wonder what it looks like when you're firing it. I'll have to try it on something. Okay, well, anyway. So, the episode itself, number one thing that I really enjoyed or did not expect was who I would be dealing with in this mission. I assumed, since it was Voyager who had gone to find the Crinum, that it would be Voyager and Tuvok I would be meeting up with for this mission. I was surprised that it was not Voyager or Tuvok, but instead Nog and his Chimera. Very, very, very surprised by that. So they brought back the actual actor who voiced Nog, or played Nog, in DS9, and he was on point. He sounded great. So it's good to have Nog back, just another Star Trek, you know, person from the TV show. It just makes the game feel much more, much more canon, much more alive, much more real when, the, when you have the real actors like that in the game. It was very cool seeing what happened to him over time and learning the fact that his father, Rom, became, Na became Nagus and then he became the son of... Negus, and he's in Starfleet still. He went through all of that. He's gone very far. He's a captain now, Captain Nog. So that is very cool. And uh, then, of course, we learned again all about the Crinum and what's been happening over the time since since we last saw them. And it looks like they have continued their research into time manipulation and are able to hide not only a colony but an entire planet and remove it out of the time stream. That's a very powerful technology to have, and it also appears they are able to affect the time stream. They are able to erase, for example, civilizations or things or whatever to change history. Now, they don't exactly time travel to do that, but they just, they do it through their technology. They're able to remove things from the time stream. That's a very powerful technology and something the Iconians would be afraid of. The Iconians, of course, cannot get near anything that has messes with chronotons because that messes up their brains. Their brains are chronoton-based. Also, this doesn't appear to be what many thought, and that would have been using the weapons of the Krenum, which are chronoton-based weapons. Uh, many thought that they were going to be using maybe chronoton torpedoes or weaponry because that would mess up the Iconians, but it looks like that's not the reason why they have sought out the Crinum here. It looks like it's going to be the time man manipulation technology that's actually going to help them win this war. Now the Crinum want to rebuild Anorax's ship. Now it's interesting that they even know about that. Because the time was reset, you see, time was rebooted in a way. Totally reset to where the ship never existed. So, how do the Krenum know that he made that ship in the first place back then, in a different timeline, and that he had changed the timeline so much that at one point he did make an, a, a really big Krenum empire uh, through his time manipulation? The only way they could know that is if A they were also out of sync of, with time and were able to see those changes or b through some way they were able to detect that timeline where that had happened so i don't know how they specifically know that he had a time a, a ship like that I, w I won't call it a time ship because it's not a time ship it doesn't travel through time 
it rather removes itself from the time stream and then is able to change the time stream. One can also argue that changing the time stream or timeline would be the same thing as a multiverse type deal where you're basically moving it to another dimension or changing dimensions to another another um, universe. I mean, it's practically the same idea. You know, something is different and therefore now you're in a universe where, th where, where that particular stuff happens but it didn't happen in another universe. It gets really confusing and I'm not even going to sit here and try to argue, you know, multiverse, multi-dimensions where everything can happen versus time streams versus timelines and how all that differs. My gosh, you could blow your mind thinking about all that stuff. So I'm not, I don't, I'm going to try to say it's not really multiverse related, but more just time stream related, whatever that means. But the fact that they know he built that ship is interesting, and I still don't know how they would have known that. But the fact they want to rebuild it and kind of start this process all over again, that is a powerful problem. Because here you then would have a race with the ability to remove your race from existence, from ever existing in the first place. Can we trust the Krenum with that ship? Can we trust anybody with that ship? Okay, let's say we destroy the Iconians with it. Well, who's to say somebody else doesn't use it for something else? And do we really, should we really have that power? Should anybody have that power? So leave your comments below. I want to hear what you guys think. Should we go through with this building of this ship with the Krenum? Should the Krenum have this ship? Should they be allowed to use it? Should we be allowed to use it? Do we even have that kind of right to use it against the Iconians? Which, by the way, keep in mind, removing the Iconians 200,000 years ago would completely change the universe forever. Imagine a universe where the Iconians never existed. It would be a lot different. So, I don't know. I just don't know. This is a very, very, very deep question. And I look forward to seeing how Cryptic answers it. They have this in their hands. This is up to them. However, they want to write this next story that answers this question. Are we going to do that or not? Are we going to build the ship? Are we going to use it? That is a very big burden to have in your hands to write as a story. I hope they can pull through and make it a good one. This is epic. This is stuff that I wish was in a TV episode or a movie. What we're getting in Star Trek Online right now in terms of storyline content for this Iconian War has been epic in scale. I would love to see this on the big screen. This deserves more than just a game. This is good storytelling. I'm very happy with it, so I look forward to seeing where they go. Very unexpected mission for me, did not uh, know this was coming. Glad that I played it, I really enjoyed it. I don't think it will be any different playing it as a Klingon or Romulan, unless I just really feel like doing it, I'll, re I'll do it on the other factions like I did the other missions. Otherwise I may not, I may just leave this one here just like it is, because that was good enough. I enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. All right. Thank you all for watching. Drop your comments. Let me know what you think of the mission and where this is going and all of that. Just a whole lot of stuff there. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one.